In this video, we're going to be using plasticity to make this contoured handle, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we are going to tackle something I just did yesterday in Fusion 360. And one of the comments was asking about doing this in plasticity. Is it easier? What is the different workflow, etc. So on this video, we're going to be making this sort of complex shaped handle using plasticity, but there is a catch here. We're going to be using the beta version. So I'm on a studio license and I get access to the beta version. And there have been some updates that have been coming to some of the surfacing or sheet functionality. So we're going to talk about that in this video. We're going to talk about the differences, what doesn't work in the current consumer release or the indie version, and what you can expect is coming soon. So to get started, I'm going to clear this out and start a brand new design. So I need to go back and turn on my edges and my grid and all that fun stuff, and then delete the cube, just select it and get rid of it. We're going to be using a handful of shortcut keys. I'll call them out and put them on the screen for you. But all of these shortcut keys are the same whether you're using version 1.1, which is the current version you download the 14-day trial of, or if you're using this beta version or soon to be released 1.2 version. So number seven on the numpad will go to the top. And we're just going to be using a spline curve to create sort of the outside shape of the handle. Right click to accept. And then we will create the inside shape of the handle. Right click to accept, we'll rotate, select both of these. We're going to hit E to extrude and pull them down. And then we'll select both curves and hit delete. We don't need the curves. All we really need is what we see here. So the next thing for us to do is determine whether or not we want some additional curvature or influence in the loft that's going to create the handle. And what I mean by that is I can come in and I can shift select these upper edges, hit L to loft, and I can simply just use G1, G2 continuity to just change the shape. So G1 is tangent and it'll just drive the direction. G2 will actually look at the radius of curvature and give us a little bit of a smoother look. But in general, when I did this infusion, I had splines on the end to control the shape. Now, this is still a little bit tricky in plasticity, if I'm going to be honest. There are things that we can do, but there is no constraint system. We're not driving the tangency of a curve and being able to manipulate it while maintaining that tangency. So we have to be a little bit careful. So I'm going to select the back edges, again, holding down Shift and then Shift D. That's going to duplicate those. And for now, I'm going to hide the two sheets. What I'm going to do is select the endpoints, again, holding shift, and then L on the keyboard is bridge vertex. Now, bridge has gotten some updates in plasticity. There is going to be some new functionality that comes out with a new command called bridge surface, I believe is going to be released. I'm not going to cover anything that isn't in the current version of plasticity, but I will talk about where some of the differences or nuances come into play. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at G2 continuity on the inside edge and G3 on the outside, just to kind of push that out a little bit more, right click and accept, and then get rid of these two lines. So if we look at the sheets, you can kind of see what we have going on here. I'm going to repeat the process on the front. So again, shift select those two, shift D to duplicate. And I'm not going to hide this, uh, the surfaces or sheets this time, but I just want to select the end vertices here. L to loft, and then G3 on the outside and G2 on the inside. All I'm really doing is I'm making the back part of that handle a little bit thicker, just for visual effect here, select and delete those two. So now that we have this structure in place, what we're going to do is select the top edges, again, holding down shift, L to loft, and then we're going to select, hold down shift and select. So now we've got our guides. You'll notice that we have these little G1 dots on the screen. Now those are not there in the current release. You can control the continuity, but you're not gonna see those G1, G2, G3 dots on the screen. It's a really nice indicator, but um, you're not gonna visually see those, but that's okay. We're gonna use tangency to drive this. We're gonna right click to say, okay. Then get rid of the curves because we don't need them anymore. Now you don't have to get rid of the curves, but it certainly helps. 
and I actually don't need these uh, extensions anymore. So number seven on the numpad, let's go ahead and bring this up. One difference or one change that I'm going to make to the Fusion 360 version of this and the plasticity version. In the Fusion version, I actually came all the way out to the edge with this first cut. But with Fusion, I've got a ruled surface. Uh, I don't actually have a ruled surface here. Um, I do have the option to extend the surface. So if I select it, um, I can extend this. But the problem with this extension here, unlike the ruled surface that I used in the Fusion example, is it's part of the surface here. So we'd have to draw a line, we'd have to imprint it or split it or cut it or do something else, which makes it a little bit trickier. So for this example, I'm not gonna be doing that. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna be using a line. And I'm just gonna come in slightly, come up to the point where I wanna make my cut, right click to accept, and then go to my spline curve. We'll come off of that and simply create the shape we want. Shift select the original and J to join them together, then C to cut and select my target. Now if I rotate this around, I should have this curve I can get rid of, and I should have the sheet, and I should have that extra little piece there. So I don't need it, so I'm gonna select and delete it, keeping everything as clean as possible. If you do have geometry you need, of course keep it, but it becomes really tricky to remember what is what. So I'm just gonna delete it for our example. Seven on the numpad, and again, go to my spline curve, select the edge end, come in and come back, right click, E to extrude to pull this down, and once again, get rid of that curve because we don't need it. So this is the first case or first example here where we need to start to bridge that shape. We need to fill it in. Now, generally, we have two main tools for this to happen. We've got our loft tool, which could partially work here, but not great. Uh, and we do have our patch, we have our patch tool. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at loft first. So I'm gonna select that back edge, uh, shift select this one, hit L for loft, and select this as my guide curve. Now you'll notice the preview disappears. And if you're on version 1.1, this is not going to work at all. The preview disappears because right now it's trying to drive tangency on all three edges and we just realistically can't do that. So I need to make this one G0 and this one G0 as well and then my preview comes back. So this ability to create a loft with this triangular section using the edge or a cut edge of my sheet, that can't be done in 1.1 but it is in the current beta version. So I do expect this to be in the production version 1.2 when it's released. What you can do now, we're gonna hit escape to get off of that, but what you can do right now is you can select these edges, again, holding down shift, and hit F to start to type in your find and start to type patch. And patch will let you do this currently. Uh, so we can change this G0 to G1 and then leave the others at G0. Now, in the current version, you're gonna see a blue or a purple dot there, you're not gonna see G1, G2, G3. You're going to just have that dot and when you click it, it'll cycle through continuity. So you, you have to play around with that a little bit, uh, but you will notice that. We're gonna right click to accept. And when we take a look here, we've got two sheets now. If I hide sheet 39, you'll notice it left the original. And if I hide sheet 35, it now has this extra little piece added to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this and hit Alt and J, which is gonna allow me to unjoin it. I'm gonna hit H to hide it, and then Control select both of those and delete them because I don't need them. Again, just trying to clean things up. I'm gonna get rid of that one. And now we've got a good starting point. So seven on the number pad. Again, spline curve. I'm gonna come up and just create the cutaway that I want. Now this one in my example, fades away, sort of disappears into the rest of the handle body. So we're gonna draw a line over to here, shift select and join. So now we've got a single curve. You do have to be careful with what you select using those default uh, top, front and right planes because the first selection, if I happen to do it over here, and I'll go ahead and do this as an example. Uh, if I started over here and then I came back and did my spline curve and sort of drew it over here, when we rotate this around, this is now at the height of that original selection. Uh, so you can see it's still planar, it's still gonna be sort of a flat curve, but 
it is in space where my first selection was. That is not true if you happen to make your own construction plane, but right now that is true for the default top plane, which we use the number seven on the keyboard for. So we've got this curve here, and I'm gonna hit C to cut and select the target body and then right click to accept. And note that it doesn't work. Now part of the reason it doesn't work is because it can't cut all the way through this body. It ends at this edge and it just, for whatever reason, isn't working. So we're gonna do an alternate method of imprinting that using shift and I, then select the body, right click, and you can see we were able to now create that edge. Again, curve, don't need it, delete it. We're gonna select that face. We're gonna use Alt and J to unjoin it. And then we need to select it and delete it. Again, we don't need it. Seven on the number pad, supply and curve, and come back and create this curve. Now, obviously narrating this takes a little bit longer. Uh, it's actually not that bad of a process. It is better with the newer beta version than it is with the original or the 1.1 that you can get currently. Uh, so keep that in mind. Extrude E on the keyboard, delete the curve, uh, pretty common. So here's the second thing that we wanna understand that is different about the current version 1.1 of plasticity in this beta version that I'm using. So when we create a loft, I'm gonna go from this edge, shift select this edge here and hit L on the keyboard. When we create a loft in the current 1.1 version of plasticity, we cannot use the edges of the sheet as a guide rail. Uh, that is changed in this beta version, which is why I'm using it for this example. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't make this happen with the patch tool. It just doesn't work with the loft tool. So again, you can still do what we're doing here currently with patch, but the loft tool generally would be my go-to for a four side like this. So I'm gonna select this edge, shift select this edge. And again, the preview is gone. And the main reason the preview is gone is because it's trying to drive tangency with all the edges and that's not what we want or can have. So we're gonna click through until we get G0 and do the same thing here. Again, with patch, you'll have to play around with this. We want tangency at the back. We could also drive curvature continuity back there or curvature continuity up here. It does make a drastic change. So make sure that you do at least play around and understand what's going on here. But again, I want at least tangency at the midline because that's when we mirror the entire thing over. We want it to be smooth, right click and accept. So this new loft, different than patch, didn't join everything together and make a copy of that original body. So now I can just hide the sheet I don't want, delete it and select both of these holding down shift and join them together. So here, the next piece is we're gonna add a fillet. We're gonna see if we can do this. So I'm gonna select that edge, begin pulling it down, right click to accept, and we'll do the same thing over here. Select this edge, pull it down, and right click to accept. Now, there, uh, if we take a look at this, there's an option D on the keyboard for fillet distance, and that's essentially just the pullout menu. This is the number here. One difference that Fusion does have that is not available here in Plasticity, at least not that I'm aware of, is the ability to drive the cord length of that fillet. Now, I believe I remember in an older version of Plasticity that it may have been there. In this current version, we've got limit stop points, which would basically tell us where we can start and end the fillet, not really what we want in this case. And we've got her chamfer angle and our fillet distance. So not really perfect in this instance. And the main reason is because the angle between faces is greater right in this area, which means that the fillet is gonna be wider there and narrower down here. And in reality, I would love to be able to have a cord length option here to keep the fillet a consistent width. That would be, that would be a nice addition. Not, the end of, not a deal breaker by any means, not the end of the world, but just keep in mind that there, there's one minor dish, uh, addition that is different between the example I did in Fusion 360 and the example here. Uh, I will say that in Fusion, we had a lot of trouble with the fillets. Uh, they did produce some pretty bad geometry at the back edge, and that's not a problem here in plasticity. It did really well actually creating those fillets. So again, just a minor difference I wanna point out because in the Fusion video, we did talk about that cord length distance. So now we've got it selected, we're gonna mirror across Z, 
we are going to merge the two halves together and right click to accept. So once we have this, I'm gonna go up into toggle off my axes. I'm gonna put it in perspective. I'm gonna show the edges or hide the edges, I mean, and just take a look at the result. So as we bring this around, so you can see it's kind of got a triangular shape because we use G3 continuity to drive that curve on the edge and G2 on the front. And that gave us that wider section at the back. And we rotate this around. You can see that we've got a sharp edge here because we didn't add a fillet. We certainly can go back and do that. Pull that in and just blend it. But uh, you can see here that it blends really nicely. This edge right here disappears because we were able to use G2 continuity. Uh, we can go in and give it that red color that we all like. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm trying to move it around where that light spot is. And I think everything looks pretty good. So I'm happy with the results. I'm happy with how long this took. And I've had a lot of questions, people asking, should they go to plasticity for surfacing? And up until now, I had said not quite yet. If surfacing is what you want to do, you can certainly do it with plasticity. But there are things that I knew were coming in this you know, mo most recent version that would certainly help. Things like being able to use the edge of a surface as a guide rail for a loft. That is a big deal where before we had to have curves, which meant that we had to either use the patch tool or we had to go in and duplicate those edges. And then it just kind of got a little messy. Uh, so now it's much easier for us to build these nice smooth surfaces that go across the mirror line and the fillets are added really nicely. The geometry that we're adding looks pretty good. And I'm really happy with these results. So that is essentially the same model in fusion and in plasticity. So hopefully that answers some questions for people that have been asking. If you have any questions on this or any more uh, comparisons, again, I tried to point out the things that were different between this beta version that I'm using here and the current version. So you were aware of that. But uh, again, if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.